Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to the AME Food Testing Show. Today's guests and topic, food safety at the Ohio Produce Grow- Growers and Marketers Association with Bob Jones, Jr., the chair of the Ohio Produce Marketing Agreement and chief operating officer of the Chef's Garden, and Michael V. Gary, serving as the executive director of the Ohio Produce Growers and Marketers Association and chief executive officer of OFA, the Association of Horticulture Professionals. First, let's learn a little bit about Bob Jones. He serves as the chief operating officer of the Chef's Garden, and his responsibilities include working with farms, with the farm's field and greenhouse growers on nutrient management, plant and soil biology, food safety, immigration and energy. He holds bachelor's de- a bachelor's degree in agriculture from the Ohio State University and a master's degree from the Institute of Effective Church Leadership. Jones has been involved in industry organizations for over 15 years. Bobby first served on the board of directors of the Ohio Vegetable and Potato Growers Association and subsequently on the board of the Ohio Produce Growers and Marketers Association. He presently serves on the board of the National Organization of OFA, the Association of Horticultural Professionals, and is the chair of the Ohio Produce Marketing Agreement. Additionally, our guest is Michael V. Gary. He's serving as the executive director of the Ohio Produce Growers and Marketers Association, the chief executive officer of OFA, the Association of Horticulture Professionals. Based in Columbus, Ohio, OFA is the national organization representing the interests of greenhouse growers, garden center operators, nurseries, florists, interior plantscapers, green industry suppliers, students, and educators. He's best known for short course, the largest trade show, for the horticulture industry. OPGMA is a leading organization in Ohio for fresh produce growers, packers, and marketers. Michael has 20 years of association management and organizational development experience, in including serving as the executive director of the American Institute of Architecture Students, senior director for National Association of Home Builders, and senior staff positions with the Delta Chi Fraternity and the North American Interfraternity Conference. He's a graduate of the University of Florida, and earned the designation of Certified Association Executive from the American Association of Executives in 2000. Welcome with me, Michael Gary and Bob Jones. And I shall now engage them in our conversation. Hold, please. Bob and Michael, welcome to the show. Hi, Andy. Good to be with you. Good morning, Andy. Would you like to update us on any of your current activities beyond your illustrious introductions? <laughs> they were illustrious. They were not, weren't they? Well, I know this morning we were going to primarily focus on food safety issues, but it may be just a good time just to share that uh, OPGMA is an organization that's been serving the state of Ohio for about almost six years, and it's a uh, was early on a merger of several other organizations, and uh, our vision and actually our mission right now is to serve produce growers and marketers in Ohio for a variety of things, uh, technical education, networking, uh, you know, trade shows, helping them develop some, develop the market here in the state of Ohio. So we do lots of things, but uh, one of the things we're most proud of right now, our largest initiative, is, is our food safety program called the Ohio Produce Marketing Agreement. We've been working on this for about three years, and uh, we're thankful to the Ohio Department of Agriculture and USDA because it's been primarily underwritten by the by a specialty crop block grant that we received a few years ago. Excellent. Gentlemen, let's start off with a baseline question. What is food safety? Andy, I think that our interpretation of good food safety in the United States today really starts with an understanding that eating healthy should not be dangerous. I think that that's something that all of us as as growers, as handlers, as consumers uh, can can wholeheartedly agree on. And so we look at that really as a social responsibility on behalf of the growers where we have shared responsibility. The growers certainly are at the beginning of this process because we take these crops from seed to table. 
there are also our handlers involved, folks that are packers and shippers, grocery stores, restaurants, who take that produce from the grower and then change its form to a form that the consumer will actually eat. Uh, in some instances, though, uh, when we're talking about farmer's markets or grocery store purchases, the consumers themselves also share in the responsibility of good food safety. And I think ra anything that we can do to raise the awareness of what good food safety really means all through that entire supply chain is really beneficial for all of us. We do take it very seriously as growers because of that commitment that we have in protecting our consumer. And not just because we're trying to protect and build on our business space, but also because it's the right thing to do. Uh, and, but we want to make sure that we're doing everything that we can as growers to, to do risk analysis on our farms and then to enact any measure that might be effective at reducing the likelihood of microbial contamination. Um, OPMA provides measures um, based in sound science as standards that help growers raise their own awareness on their farm and how these standards might apply to diff farms of different sizes, different types, growing different commodities. But there are some basic core standards in food safety that allow all of us to do our specific part in helping protect the folks that are actually consuming the food that we produce. And what's important Very about good. the protection, just to reiterate what uh, Bob is saying, is that consumers, whether they're buying from a farmer's market or they're buying a grocery store or any other outlet, that they have you know, an expectation that the product they're receiving, the food they're receiving, and certainly the fresh food, food that we're focused on. So I'm not, we're not really talking about uh, packaged or um, processed food, they're really right. the fresh product, uh, that that consumers need to have confidence that what they're buying is is safe and they can eat it. And certainly, you know, we want to, while our mission here is not, not necessarily be teaching, consume, you know, skills at home in terms of washing products, but that's important as well. But even if without that, that there's a confidence level in the supply chain that they're buying things, certainly in the state of Ohio, that they, have, they can feel comfortable giving it to their family, to their children, and know that it's safe. Food should always be safe, and it's, and it's, it's unfortunate that we have to talk about it sometimes, that then there's unfortunate that it's not, and that there are incidences that around the country that have caused concern in the global or the, the larger supply chain. And that's why we're doing this, to bring some confidence back to the marketplace. And as well as there's a growing expectation by the buyers, the grocery stores and the wholesalers, that they want to see that their suppliers to them, i.e. the growers, are working uh, in an efficient and effective way to produce safe food. So they have confidence buying from them as well and putting it into, into the supply chain. Well, gentlemen, let's flesh out how many members are in your organization, A, and then B, describe for us what is the food safety program that you've initiated with your members? Well, I'll talk a little about the organization, Andy. The, as I mentioned at the beginning, Ohio Produce Growers and Marketers Association has several hundred members, uh, growers of all sizes, uh, from you know, very small farms to some of the largest farms in, in Ohio and in, in the country. And then collectively, we're working on a variety of issues, uh, in, as we mentioned, certainly food safety, but also helping to build the market within the state of Ohio and um, build a community among farmers so that cooperatively they can work on education, uh, consumer outreach, improving good business practices, you know, those sorts of things, uh, so they could be successful farmers, which is becoming more and more challenging, you know, as the years go on. Go on. Um, the, the food safety thing was born out of, you know, a concern several years ago, and, uh, you know, we're excited to be part of this and trying to find a, a solution to not just the state of Ohio, but really for the entire country. I think so the, could, the marketing yeah. agreement project, and the OPMA, is really right, a grassroots. It's a grassroots efforts by the produce, fresh produce industry in Ohio uh, to promote and protect food safety, but also to promote and protect the industry as a whole. Uh, as we've mentioned earlier, consumer confidence is huge for all of us in the industry around the country. Um, and if we can 
do a better job of making sure that, that first and foremost, we are protecting the consumers by producing safe food. That's of the utmost importance. But just as important is making sure that we're letting those consumers know what we are doing and why we're doing those things to protect them. Because information is so important these days, and folks want to know more about food. The whole lo local food movement, uh, consumers are, are much more interested today than they were even five and ten years ago in knowing exactly where their food came from, how it was being produced, how the folks that are producing it are being treated. Um, there are just so many things that go into this today, both uh, from a safety aspect, but also from a social aspect. Um, making sure, you know, food miles are, are very important today. Um, and where products coming from and the standards that have been applied to the production of that food, folks are, are interested in, in buying local and developing relationships with the folks that grow their food. And I think that you can see that in the explosion of the farmers' markets in the United States today. Uh, almost a 400% increase in the number of farmers markets in the last 20 years in the United States is an indicator that folks want to get closer to the production of their food. That's all great news for those of us who are in the industry and doing it in a way that is socially responsible. Um, having those relationships, people are coming to the farmers market and asking not only about varieties, but how folks are growing the produce. And that's, that's really good news for all of us who are in the fresh produce business because it's raising awareness of how we do things in the United States and that we do, in fact, have the safest food supply in the world. And what we're trying to do is even raise the bar further. OPMA. Let's talk a little bit about what. The, go ahead. Okay, but I'll just share just some of the details about what OPMA is, uh, the Ohio Produce Marketing Agreement. If people visit our website, which is opma.us, um, you can learn more about that. But just an overview of, of our program that, one, is Bob, I think is really important that he just shared is that it's a grassroots effort led by, by the Ohio agriculture community. This is not being imposed by any government agency. Uh, the industry itself said, you know, we need to get involved and engaged and find a solution that we can present to consumers, and that's how this pr program came about. Uh, some of the components of, of OPMA is that it's, uh, it's what we haven't really talked about yet is that it's a certification program. There are standards that have been uh, developed that are based in science, and those standards are then what farms are inspected against. So there are uh, cer uh, trained and experienced and educated inspectors that go to the farms who choose to, choose to participate. And that's an uh, important word that when I say that they choose to participate. This is totally voluntary at this point. That, and that's what makes it much more, more robust is that farms want to be in it and will be much more diligent, I think, because they know this is a voluntary effort and that they're being judged uh, in this inspection program. And they will get to receive a certification uh, based on the inspection. And it's also uh, what I think is unique about our program is that it's, it's tiered, meaning that it applies to any size farm. So if some very small farms or even a farmer's market to some very large farms or nationwide farms that, that serve nationwide, they all can participate, and there's a place for them in this inspection program. Uh, the other important thing I think about our program, which is also unique, is that it's advised, there's an advisory board of farmers and, and scientists who are part of this who are together developing the standards that they know that are realistic and can be um, adhered to by farms and know that they are, they are uh, in the end, able to provide to consumers a product that is much more safe um, than they would otherwise. Um, and then lastly, I think what's important is that because we want everybody to participate, we've made this very affordable. Uh, there are lots and lots of inspection programs around the country that are very expensive and farms cannot afford to participate. This program, they can. And uh, that's important because we want as many farms participating as possible. Uh, OPGMA and the, the association itself and the program, OPMA, is a nonprofit venture. Uh, we're not doing this to make any money off of farms. We're doing this for farmers, and we're doing this for consumers. Excellent, gentlemen. That's an excellent summary of the purposes 
and the organization of the agreement. What are some of the benefits that we've heard about, and if you can summarize those to the consumers, and as we've already heard, in Ohio and nationally? Andy, I think that the, the, primary re, the, the primary benefit to consumers is the fact that uh, they have a better level of understanding of those farms that are seriously committed to analyzing and reducing risk on their farming operations. Because this is a voluntary agreement, there will be some farms who choose not to engage in this process. If I'm a consumer and I'm at a farmer's market and 80% of the farms have engaged in this process and you can see their certificate hanging at their stall in the farmer's market, I think that I certainly would ask those farms who have chosen not to, at least so I know why they have chosen not to participate. Because this is a grassroots effort and it was designed by farmers for farmers and the advisory board members are a majority farmers, there are scientists, there are agency folks, we have tried to be extremely inclusive in engaging all interested parties in Ohio in, de in the development of this program so that we had input from every level, from the agency level at Ohio Department of Agriculture, but also uh, we're, we're engaging folks that are buying produce. The, uh, chain store buyers have, are weighing in on this now and giving us their feedback. But making sure that we raise that level of awareness and that consumers can ask those farmers questions, consumers can go to the website, see which farms are actually engaging, um, and, and making sure that they know what we're doing and why we're doing it, and, and being very open about that and willing to discuss those things so that they understand what's being done on their behalf and why. Excellent answer. What about benefits to the food producers, the actual farmers? Are there benefits that they derive? Well, I think that well, I think there's they are certainly they're getting in confidence that uh, what they're doing is is leading to a safer product they can put out into the market. Uh, I want to you know add that there's uh, as well add to that that this that it gives them a structure and a better understanding of how to how to produce food in a safer way by just following the standards that are being applied within the certification program. And we're, we look at things like water quality, uh, composting on site, trace back, which is very important, you know, if there should be a problem, and then what are considered general good handling practices. That while farm, many producers and farmers are aware of these things, we're giving them some structure to learn about how to do a better job on their farms. They, as we've said several times, they do care, and now we're, now we're providing some more um, structure and education uh, so they do a better job of, of, of paying attention to these things that are important to a safer product. Um, and that's, I think, one of the better, one of the great opportunities for farmers is that uh, there's some, um, you know, opportunity here to learn along the way in terms of, and then ultimately lead to a certification. Um, as well as just, you know, providing a better product to the marketplace. And as Bob suggested that, you know, if a consumer asks you know, are you part of the marketing agreement? You know, we want people to say yes, and if they're not, uh, you know, we want them to join the program, certainly. And so uh, it can build a market for for the farms. If they are, are um, marketing themselves as being certified in our program, and really certified in any program, which is important, uh, but certified in our program, that could help them build their market uh, among consumers and among wholesalers or other buyers like grocery stores. Andy, I want to build a little bit on one of Michael's points there on the educational piece. Uh, there is a team of, of food safety folks at Ohio State who has looked at what we are doing. In the certification process, the certifying agency cannot conduct educational uh, activities, training activities. But the university as an outside agency has looked at our standards and it looked, it looked at our program, and they have have designed and built a training module that supports growers who want to become certified in this standard. And so they're able to get that training at a very low cost, uh, and that helps them. I really think that 
that as a grower myself, we're certain there are several things that cause us to worry. You know, we worry about the economy. We worry about uh, guest worker uh, regulations and immigration issues. But that thing that really keeps us up at night is food safety because we really take that commitment seriously. And so these educational opportunities and the certification itself and doing a, a very in-depth risk analysis on my own farm, because every farm is a little bit different. Every farm does things just a little bit differently. And so one size does not fit all. And so you have to do this on an individual level. And raising the awareness and, and making sure that these growers understand not only what the standard is but why the standard is in place helps them then adapt those standards to their farm and at a much greater level of understanding know exactly what they have to do to reduce that risk of contamination. And I think it really is key to this program that it is designed by farmers for farmers and it's realistic. Uh, any grower who has been certifying for many years has had the experience of going through an audit with an auditor who is unaware of agriculture. The very first audit that I ever conducted on my farm was done by an auditor who had only done uh, food processing plants, and it was such a, a, a difficult process to go through because they were not aware of what goes on on the farm. And so because this is designed by farmers for farmers and we've in, included the sound science, we haven't reinvented the wheel here. We've looked at the research that's been done around the country for many years and adapted those things into our standards as well as new research that's being conducted today here at Ohio State and included all of those in there to try and really come to a common sense approach on food safety that is sensible and is effective at protecting consumers and growers alike. You can do that. They're not competing interests. They actually do. They are compatible, not competing. Mm -hmm. That's an excellent summary, Bob. What I'd like to do is to allow both of you to summarize our discussion topics, which is the food safety program in your association, in addition to outline any further programs in your future, as well as any goals that you may have, which we haven't discussed tonight. Well, the, the, maybe you should start with goals, uh, just to, as a summary, that the goal for this program and in fact, all of the education program, the other education programs initiatives of the Ohio Produce Growers and Marketers Association, is to help farmers be more successful. And we're doing that in a variety of ways. Uh, beyond just the safety program, our organization has other events throughout the year for producers and markets in the state, including a, a conference and trade show that takes place in January each year. And uh, in the summer, there's a one of the we one of the farms has an open house where we conduct facilitated tours and, and on the ground, no pun intended, training uh, for farmers uh, to learn more about how other farmers are being successful and growing a particular crop. Um, you know that, that those are our goals and our largest initiative and probably the most um, robust initiative right now is the food safety program, and the goal there is to produce it is to offer a safer product for consumers to buy. Um, you know, we talk, I'm talking about this like it's some, uh, you know, a product like it's an iPhone or something. You know, these are things that people eat and they consume every single day, and it's part of their health. Um, to be healthy, um, that they need to make sure and, and have confidence that they're eating a product, eating food, that, uh, change my language here, eating food that, um, that they won't get sick from. And that is our goal, is to help people get a, help our farmers and ultimately consumers Get, a, get some food that they know they can rely on and be safe and bring them health in their lives. Um, those are our goals, and then obviously that means getting more farmers involved in the program. Andy, I think, that, uh, Bob, go ahead. I think that, that one of the things we look at as, as businessmen is food is, is what we work with, and 
you know, kids don't eat vegetables today because vegetables don't taste good. And so you, we look at, at the food that we're producing. Not only does it need to be safe, it needs to look good, it needs to taste good, and all of those things that we can do um, to help the consumer and help the growers become truly more sustainable in their endeavors. And from the OPGMA aspect, really how we've tried to to go about doing this and helping each other is to really build community. And, and when you're building community, you take people who are like-minded and who are in the same industry, and you look at what their opportunities are, what their threats are, um, and you try and address those, and you do it in a way where you're building community as you do it. All of our educational opportunities and outreach efforts, including the OPMA project, are designed to specifically do that, to promote and protect the fresh produce industry in the state of Ohio, to create opportunities to allow the small family farm to exist into the future. You know, we've all seen the census statistics. The latest census that was released, agricultural folks who live on the farm in the United States are at an all-time low. We're now below 1% of the population. It's very, very important that we build community with those of us who still do make our living from the small family farm. And all of the outreach efforts and educational efforts that we conduct at OPGMA. And there are many other organizations around the country, regionally and statewide, that are attempting to do the same thing that we are. And that is to build community, to work together, to get better, to promote and protect the industry, to pr promote and protect a livelihood that for most of us, it's all we've ever done. We've, we've grown up on the farm. We live on the farm. We take very seriously our commitment to what we're doing on the farm so that we can be truly sustainable on into the future and provide opportunities for future generations. Excellent summary, gentlemen. I'd like to allow you a closing statement each, and then we'll conclude our interview. Bob, you I go think first. I just gave mine. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great closing statement. I, I really, I don't think you can summarize you know, no, who we are as an organization. Right, I don't to, want to detract right. from, from that statement. No, and I don't want to detract either that there's, uh, you gave a great summary of who we are as an organization and as a community in the state of Ohio and, and what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, I think my, close, my closing statement would be is that for our listeners to explore more about the program, um, and our organization, you know, opma.us is where you can learn more about the Ohio Produce Marketing Agreement, and opgma.org is where you can learn more about the Ohio Produce Growers and Marketers Association. Um, we're doing some very exciting things, not just for the state of Ohio, but it's really for the entire country. And the things that we're working on, including the marketing agreement, are not uh, restricted to the state of Ohio, and these are programs and activities and standards that could be applicable you know, and many other communities in other parts of our country. Excellent. Gentlemen, thank you for being on the program. Uh, my feeling is that farmers nationwide need to join associations, need to be educated, need to get their game up so we don't have the apprehension of food threats from our, particularly our fresh produce. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, for sure. I mean, that's, that's why associations exist, and they – are organized by the industry for the industry, whatever that industry might be, but and certainly for farmers that community is so important and that is part that is part of the culture of farmers that associations can add to that and, and bring other value to those communities. And most farmer most farming organizations, certainly ours, uh, we try to keep the participation, the, the fees to participate very low because we realize that farming is not necessarily um, um, a wealthy adventure for people, and uh, so it's make, we make it very easy for people to be involved. Well, gentlemen, I'd like to terminate the interview with, again, thank you for participating, and look forward to your future participation should you have a significant event that your food safety program has generated for this, the residents of the state of Ohio or our fine country. Thank you very much. I wish you a great evening. Andy, thank, thank you, you very much. Great day. Okay, bye. Now. bye.